أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الغوي الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك وزين أنفاسنا على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا ومستودعين قلوبنا من الأولين والآخرين أبي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد في الأولين وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد في الآخرين وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد في الملأ الأعلى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Congratulations to everybody on the wilada of Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha alayhi afdal as-salati wassalam Imam al-Ridha alayhi as-salam he has taught us many lessons throughout his life, such as humility, and importantly has also taught us how to talk to people of uh, not, not of our faiths, with his debates with Christians and Jews and even atheists. He has taught us how to discuss, uh, how to talk with them about religious matters in a respectful way. Another very important uh, another very important lesson we have learned from Imam al-Rada alayhi salam is just because you think you are somewhere, that doesn't guarantee Jannah. I will mention a beautiful story from Uyun Akhbar al-Rada. It is narrated from Ali ibn Ibrahim ibn Hashim, who was quoted on the authority of Yasir, the servant of Imam al-Rada alayhi salam. He said, Zayd ibn Musa, the brother of Imam al-Rada, he rebelled in Medina against the Abbasids, against Ma'mun. So Ma'mun, he brought him forth and he asked him, why did you do this? He told him that I rebelled against, the, against you because you guys are the Abbasids, you guys are bad people. And then he told him, but the Umayyads, they are still here. Their establishment is still here. Why didn't you rebel against them? He said, if you release me, I'll go burn their houses down too. So then uh, Ma'mun, he laughed and told him, Go, let your brother deal with you. Because at this time, who was second in charge? It was Imam al-Ridha. Not because he wanted to be with Ma'mun. Rather, because he wanted, uh, rather for political reasons, he was put in this position. It was kind of forced in his hands. So, he was taken to Imam al-Ridha. And Imam al-Ridha, alayhi salam, he told him. What is, Yasir said, when Zayd was taken to Imam Abu al-Hasan al-Ridha, he asked him, O oh Zayd, have the words of the narrators from Kufa deceived you when they say Fatima maintained her chastity, so God forbade the fire from touching her progeny? He is saying, do you think this narration is about you? The Imam continues, no, by God, this is only for al-Hasan and al Hussein. Zayd, you sin against Allah. And you think you will enter heaven while our father obeyed God, fasted in the day, worshipped at night, and he will enter heaven. If this is true, that means you are dearer than our father in the sight of God. He's saying that you sin and our father, he obeyed God. You disobey God. If he disobeys God and our father obeys God, both of them are in heaven. This, uh, this is saying that Zaid, he is dearer to God. Then he said, by God, no one can attain the ranks near God except by obeying him. Do you think that you can attain such ranks by committing sins? Surely you are wrong. Zayd said, I am your brother and the son of your father. Basically, Zayd is saying that Jannah is wajib for me. My father is Imam Musa al-Qadim and my brother, he is Imam Ali al-Ridha. Then Imam says such beautiful words. He says, you are only my brother when you obey God. If you don't obey Allah, our brotherhood is broken. It's gone. Then he says, the Holy Quran, it states, And Nuh said, O oh Lord, surely my son is of my family. Then God said, O oh Noah, he is not of your family for his unrighteous conduct. And God threw him out of Noah's family since he was a sinner. Because he disobeyed uh, Nabi Nuh alayhi salam when he told him, uh, Come with me on the ark. Subhanallah, look at these beautiful lessons from Imam al radha alayhi salam on how, must, on how one must be sincere, both in faith and in action. Unfortunately, we have some people today that believe just because I am Shia, just because I cry for Imam al Hussein, Jannah, it's wajib for me. I am going to ha heaven. I can do whatever I want, follow all of my shahwa, follow my gharizah. It doesn't matter. I am going to heaven. And Imam al radha alayhi salam, he refutes this idea. 
Because at the end of the day, when we are on our graves, after our funerals, after the al qabr, after the squeezing of the grave, who are the angels that will come into our spiritual grave in Alam al Malakut? It's Munkar al Nakir. Imam Zain al Abidin he says, Abki ila suali munkarin wa nakirin iyai. I cry for when they question me. The questions, what are they asking us? They're going to ask us, Who is your Lord? Who is your Prophet? Uh, what is your religion? Uh, what is your book? And who are the Imams, etc.? Now the answer is Allah, He is our Lord. That, this is the answers. Allah, the Quran, Muhammad, Islam, and you list the 12 Imams. But in that, in those moments, it's not going to be for memorization. Right now, if I'm, I'm telling you this, it's from my memory. In my, in my grave, it's going to be from the heart. It's going to be my intention. My intention will be manifested in the grave, in this alam al-malakut. So maybe I might say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. But in my grave, I might say my wealth. My wealth is my Lord. Or all of these isms we have today, feminism, capitalism, this is my religion. Because this is how I truly carried out my day-to-day -day life. Because I prioritized money over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a story on one person who lived in Imam al-Radha. This will concluding remarks. His name was Ali ibn Abi Hamza al-Bata'ini. He, he was kind of a representative of Imam Musa al-Qadim while he was in prison. He had him and a few other people collect the hukuk, the zakat, the khumus, all of these charities. And then it's supposed to go to Imam Musa al-Qadim so it can be, you know, given back to the people. After Imam Musa al-Qadim died, he saw all of this money in his hands and then he said, you know, all this, all this money is mine. You know, there's no point of me giving it to Imam al radha because that's what he should have done. But instead, he kept it to himself. And this is where the waqafah started. He stopped Imam Musa al qadim To make people think that he was not a liar or a thief, he said that Imam Musa al qadim is the final Imam. There's no Imam after him. And in fact, he is Imam Mahdi and he will come back. This is what he believed. Or this is what he said. And then Imam al radha when he was on Khurasan with his companions... He told them, I have received news. I've been inspired. Do you remember Ali ibn Abi Hamza al-Bata'ini? He was between Medina and Baghdad. Do you remember him? They told him, they, they told him, yes, we remember him. He said, I have got news that when he was in his grave, Munkar and Nakir questioned him. They asked him, who's your, who's your Lord? They told him, Allah. This is what he believed. He truly did believe this. Who is your Prophet Muhammad? What's your Qibla, the Kaaba? What is your uh, book, the Quran? What's your religion, Islam? When he got to the question about who was your imams, he listed all of the imams until he got to Imam Musa al qadim And then he was trying to say Imam Ali al radha but it didn't come out. The words didn't come out of his mouth. Because his actions weren't man. His intention was manifested at this time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is truly ghafoorun rahim. And inshallah, we will be of those who see mubashir and bashir instead of munkar and nakir. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad.